In the previous tutorial, we have mentioned the common textures library that can be utilized by various assets inside the game. Usually, large projects have common library in which shared files or textures can be stored. This technique is used to save time and due to its reliability for both performance and optimization. In this chapter, we will continue the process of unwrapping, wrapping, editing UV map, and texturing 3D models. We will use some common textures on this ongoing project. For instance, these tire maps, which have been created inside Photoshop. I have used the NVIDIA texture utility to generate the normal map. You can watch the full process of generating normal maps inside Photoshop in the previous tutorial. For the tires, I will use a diffuse map, not a complete map. You can spot the difference by analyzing the map colors. The diffuse map is composed of mono values between black and white, or mono colors only, without having any gradient effects to mimic depth or shadows over the map. While the complete map has gradient effects beside the colors or the gray gradient to mimic depth or shadows, it is important to emphasize the fact that black and white are not considered to be actual colors. You can also add gray with its variable intensity to them, as the gray gradient is the result of mixing black and white with different values. All these maps have the same coordinates and they are perfectly aligned. You might notice the dark specular map. In reality, rubber materials can barely have specular or reflection upon their surface unless they get wet. Thus, we did make the specular map darker than the diffuse map. The idea behind creating this combo texture is to have six tire tread variety on the same texture that can add some diversity between the loaded vehicles during the play time. We will create and assign a material to the brake discs. During this texturing process, I will show you the wrapping process of the UV map and how to coordinate them over these textures or maps. The brake disc will be at the background of the rim, it will not catch too much lights. Beside, I do like to direct the player attention towards the rim itself, as it is actually the main asset of this area, not to the supportive or the background assets, as their main purpose is just a decoration. Specifying a darker specular map to the brake disc will serve these purposes in efficient way. Although, we could deploy transparency to illustrate the rotor holes on PNG or bitmap. The background surface behind the rotor as an object will be dark. And deploying transparency on some of these maps will not serve any purpose. Regardless to the method you chose to create maps for the rotating parts, all those maps must have balanced light and shadows. Finally, we will bake these miscellaneous maps which contain the suspension springs and the brake caliper. I will show you the unwrapping process followed by the baking process, then the final wrapping of the UV map. Since we have declared all the objectives, let's get started. During the process of creating this tire from a cylindrical primitive, we have detached both sides of the tire to elements as well as the tire tread. This is the standard method of creating tires for any game ready vehicle. The tire inner edges must overlap the rim mounting edges. While overlapping vertices are acceptable, overlapping faces are not. The wheeled components are now separated as objects. However, at some point, we might need to attach them into one single object. You need to make sure that no gaps between those components exist, nor any overlapped faces. When projecting two parallel surfaces at opposite direction, you need to flip or mirror 
the back cluster of UVs, in respect of to the projection axis. By doing that, the back cluster of UVs will be correctly aligned upon the texture or the map. The current selection of UVs is the original unwrapping of the tire tread. Since we did change the inside loop's location during the modeling process, we need to project these UVs again by using the cylindrical projection on the X axis. Overlapping similar UVs will decrease their space over the map. Based on this technique, we can optimize the 2D texture space by adding more details to the 2D textures. Also, this technique eliminates the need for high resolution textures that can impact the performance. During the modeling process of the rim and by extension the tire, we did choose 60 segments for the cylinder primitive. And 60 is divisible by both 2 and 3. Thus we can break the tread UVs by either 2 or 3 clusters. The right number will be determined by the texture coordinates. The smaller the division, the more compressed render of the texture. Each cluster of these three UVs is identical in dimensions. In order to align them correctly over the texture, you need to make the details covered by each one of them symmetrical. In order to have symmetrical render of the texture over the tire tread surface, What you see now is the right direction of the tire tread. If the wrapped UVs of the tire tread are in the wrong direction, you can simply flip or mirror them horizontally inside the UV editor.
you can increase the specular level of the tire material to increase the light intensity upon the tire surface. You can also increase the bump effect of the normal map by increasing the bump amount value of the material. I will assign the tire material to the L1 tire and I will adjust the wrapped UVs to match the L0 tire. Now, let's do a quick render for the L1 tire and compare it to the L0 render. I am going to clone the L1 rendered image to a new window, then move it to the left. Let's do a quick render for the L0 tire. Obviously, the two rendered images are not identical. You can leave it like this, considering the fact that the low resolution tire will be far away from the active or the first camera inside the game. However, it is the extra steps that make the difference between perfect and sloppy work. During the designing of the tire maps, we have taken into account the accuracy difference between the high resolution tire and the lower. On the right side, we have the L0 wheel rendered image, and on the left side, we have the L1 wheel rendered image. To save your time, I have done the texturing process for L2 and L3 tires off camera. For the L4 and L5 tires, we will need to create a new material with a texture of the full wheel spinning components. Since we will not deploy transparency over that texture, we need to include the brake disc within the texture we intend to use for the L4 and L5 tires.
press F2 to toggle the selected UV's visibility on or off. Although, the UVs we just packed, rendered the texture perfectly, on the mesh. Keeping all UVs, inside the checker area, or the map dimensions, is preferred. Let's test, the tire dirt map. Wire the tire dirt map, to the tire material, through a mix node. Check the previous tutorial for more information about the mix node. Unfortunately, we cannot control the mix amount value of multiple mix nodes by using any controller node. However, you can achieve this by writing a script to control the mix value of multiple mix nodes. This is beyond our main objectives. Nevertheless, we might discuss that later, in future tutorials. If you take a closer look, towards the rim, you may notice, the similarity of the dirt, rendered upon the inner side, of the mounting area. The rendered dirt, is not quite realistic, and we can do, much better than this. We need to wrap, this area again, to add more variety, to the rendered dirt. Taking into account, this part will gain speed. And normally, it is the smallest chunk of dirt, that stick, upon the rim mounting area. By increasing the number, of the braked UV segments, they will cover, a lot of details. After assembling, the L0 wheel components, let's create the texture, for L4, and, L5 wheels. Add a standard Omni light, with 70% intensity, at 2 meter distance, 
from the wheel left side. Switch to the left viewport, then, do a quick render, of the full wheel. You can change, the rendered image dimensions, from the render settings. Save the current rendered image, as PNG, then open it, inside Photoshop, for further editing. Scale the image, to match the map dimensions. From the filter menu, apply radial blur, to add spinning effect, to the texture. Save the texture, inside the project folder. I have already created, a material, for the L4 and L5 wheels. I have wired the complete map to the specular color. For these lower level of detail, we do not need to create a normal map. You can wire the complete map to the bumps lot. However, I used a 16 by 16 pixel blue texture to occupy the bumps lot. Now, let's assign this material to the L4 tire and rim, then wrap each UV map to match the texture coordinates. For this lower level of detail, and the next, accentuating the tire tread, is not that important, as these levels will be far away, from the active camera. We could use the cylindrical projection to wrap the highlighted UVs. But this would be a waste of time. Since we do not have any details for them on the texture to cover. You may notice the light plate in corners of the tire. Darkening the texture background will fix this deformation. If the edited texture did not update inside the viewport, save. Then, reopen the scene. When unwrapping distance symmetrical objects or elements all together, you might end with a compressed UV map. To avoid that, unwrap each symmetrical group individually.
you can select them either from the viewport or the UVW editor. Scale down the UV map vertically to release the compressed render. Afterwards, use the unified scale to scale up the UV map to match the texture. During the scaling, use the rim UV edges as guide. The tread areas of these wheels are not detached where they should be. Select these areas, then wrap them upon a dark portion of the map. The time has come to complete the wheeled components and textures. In this part, we will bake maps for both the brake caliper and the suspension springs. The suspension springs were created from a helix shape with these values. And these render settings then scaled down to match the wheel size. Let's take a look at the poly count of the caliper and the springs. In the event that we associate the use of these objects, but of course, we will not. We will need to multiply these numbers by 4. We will use these high resolution objects only to bake the maps, then assign those maps to a lower resolution objects. I am going to assign the alloy material to these objects. The same material that we have assigned to the high resolution rim. We will use the default scene lights during the texture baking and these lower resolution objects. For this bake, we need to attach the lower resolution objects into a single object. This will ease the baking process and minimize the editing time inside Photoshop. Add Unwrap UVW modifier to the object, then unwrap and align each element UVs over the map. Our interest is on the middle cylindrical UVs that currently cover the springs. Align these UVs in respective to their viewport position. Then rotate them 90 degree clockwise.
Move any unnecessary UVs outside the checker box. Select the caliper UVs, then, from the mapping menu, select flatten mapping. Usually, you do not need to change any of the dialog options. However, you can change the breaking angle between the surfaces and the space between the braked cluster and other settings as well. Just by pressing one single button, we have unwrapped all the caliper's UVs. Rotate the UVs 90 degree counterclockwise, then align them inside the checker box. We will use this UV map to guide the projection modifier to create the maps or the textures for these parts. Before committing to the UV map, we need to align each cluster surface with its viewport location. Collapse the Unwrap UVW modifier, then add Projection modifier. I will pick the high resolution objects from Render to Texture Utility. Press 0 on your keyboard to open the Render to Texture Utility, then pick the high resolution objects. I am not quite satisfied from the cage surrounding the caliper. Let's check if the lower resolution object has separated elements or not. All the elements are being separated. We need to adjust the cage from the projection modifier settings. From the cage settings, press Reset Cage. Then push the cage by 20mm. Disable the sub-object level, then proceed with Channel 1. Select Complete, Normal, and Specular Maps to Bake.
the projection modifier, project maps into images, not vectors. Sometimes, it produces this irregular edges, when projecting maps, on a smaller scale. To overcome, this pixelation effect, we need to increase, the map scale, until this irregular edges, fade away. Afterwards, we can reduce the map size, inside Photoshop. Inside Photoshop, correct any deformation, on the maps, then, add a background for each. Finally, save these maps, inside the project folder. Inside the state material editor, use pick material from object, then update the baked material, with the new edited maps. You can delete, the original color material, and, the shell material. In case you want to compare, here is the poly count. Let's simulate the spring stress test. Inside the game engine, we can animate the springs to be squeezed upon stress or pressure. The game engine can apply animation by scaling the springs at the object level. However, we can apply unified scaling upon the sub-object and verify the stretching effect of the texture inside 3ds Max. Not only, we have managed, to create a low poly springs, but also, we have a functional springs as well. Without spending too much, of our precious polygons, on unnecessary details. You can detach the springs, 
to a new object with a proper name. First, I would like to clone, then use the symmetry modifier to create other copies of this compound object for the other wheels. In order to do that, we need to align the pivot to the center of the world. Switch to the pivot commands menu, press effect pivot only, then switch to the move tool. Right click beside each axis to reset its value to zero. In order to show the home grid, go to the tools menu, then show home grid from grids and snaps. Apply reset transform, then use clone copy and symmetry to complete the required objects. This is just approximate positions, further adjustment might be required later.